In this video, we're going to finish up the three steps we need to complete before we actually start the layout of the traces on the board. We're going to look at setting up the design constraints, and if we do it correctly, it'll dramatically simplify the process of laying out traces, and we'll be sure to get things correct by design. Let's get started. We're still in the layout view of the circuit board. Here's going to be the footprint of our circuit board. This is the room that has all the parts. If you wanted to move it a little bit closer, all we'd have to do is select the room and just drag it. And now it's just a little bit better so that now when we zoom out, we can see everybody. To set the constraints, that's going to control all the physical features that we're going to implement in the layout. We come over to Design and Rules. This is going to contain all the various features that we're going to want to set. So we open up Rules. And it's already been expanded for us, and we'll just go through a few of these. And so as we glance through, here's one that is going to be important. This is the clearance between two metal features. Now, a lot of these constraints are going to be based on what our fabricator can do. So these are really designed, a lot of these are designed for manufacturing constraints. A 10 mil clear, clearance between adjacent metal is a good default value. That's what came up initially. Some fab vendors will allow you to have a 6 mil gap. But if we can keep it to 10 mil, that's great. So we're going to keep this for 10 to 10 mils unless we have to change it in order to get a trace between pads or something else. So we'll keep note of, OK, we have 10 mils, but we have 6 mils that we could use uh, if it was required. We'll skip over that one. Unrouted nets. This is going to be an important step to check for. So we want to make sure that we check for incomplete connections because we don't want to end up with uh, this sort of situation. We want to make sure that if we get that trace close to one of the pads that we actually make a good connection to it. Now comes the width constraints. Do you remember in the schematic we identified certain nets that we wanted to carry over in the layout as extra wide? Well here are those rules. We have a schematic width constraint underscore one and here's another one. And look, when we bring this up, here's what it's telling us. When the object matches a net name of the 5 volt rail, and look here are the, the different uh, nets that are available to us, when it matches the 5 volt rail, that's when we want the preferred width to be 20 mils. So it's going to set it for us automatically. This is a case where we have a constraint based on a feature that we set in the schematic. We could have come over here in the layout and just initialized and kind of added a, a new rule, but this is something that we set up in the schematic phase itself, uh, and that carried through into the layout. And likewise, here's the second constraint that we set in the schematic. That was for the 555 5 volt net. And so for anything that was power when we were in the schematic, if we set that that parameter set rule of uh, making that width 20 mils, it would come over and it would give us the preferred width of 20 mils with a max of 100. Generally, however, something that applies to all nets, if we didn't have any other constraints, we actually want to route with a 6 mil wide line. Why 6 mils? Because that's what all fab vendors can actually fabricate. And we always want to route with the narrowest trace we can in order to get the highest interconnect density. And you can say, well, isn't 6 mils really narrow? Can we get enough current through there? And of course, that's one of the labs in the class. We'll look at that in detail. And we can get an amp of current through a 6 mil wide line. So we're going to set the preferred width uh, to be 6 mils. And because that's less than the minimum, we have to set the minimum to 6 as well. And we're going to do that for each of the layers, the preferred width, and the maximum width, of course, to make it a little bit uh, uh, less constrained, we're going to put 100 mils. I doubt that we would ever want to have a 100 mil wide line, except for special occasions. So now, when we start a trace routing that is not one of the special ones that we identified over here, we're going to be routing at a 6 mil wide line. Always use the narrowest line you can in order to give you the highest interconnect density and the easiest path for routing. The routing topology, we don't really have to make any changes here. The routing priority, likewise, uh, no changes. In fact, there's really nothing else on these um, sections that we want to deal with, except for corners. And of course, it's really OK to have 90 degree bends. 
the only reason we use 45 degrees is because aesthetically it looks a little nicer. And so this just says when we're going to do a 90 degree bend, we're going to use a 45 degree angle that's going to have a 100 mil wide section to it. Perfectly fine to start with this configuration. Now comes the vias. So for the vias, very important. We always want to use the smallest diameter via we can because that again is going to give us the highest routing density. And the smallest diameter via is based on what the fab vendor can do. And if you look at the data sheets from many of the fab vendors, all of them say for no extra charge, they can do a 13 mil drill hole. So this hole, the drill, I want that minimum to be 13. The maximum, well, there's a little flexibility there. Um, we're going to have some holes that are relatively large. I'm going to make that um, 60 mils. We're going to have some test points that could be uh, that, that large. And the preferred, this is when I just put a via down, what's going to be that dimension? I want always to be 13 as the preferred dimension. And now the diameter is the capture pad diameter. What's the minimum? Well, for a fab vendor, if they use a 13 mil hole, the minimum annulus for the metal is 6 mils. So if the center hole is 13, I have 6 on this side, I have 6 mils on this side, the total diameter is 25. And so I want to use a minimum of 25. The maximum, well, okay, if I have a 60 mil via and I have 10 mils on either side, that makes this 80 mils. And the preferred is going to be the small, which is going to be 25 mils. And we're ready to go. And really, that's all that I'm going to uh, consider here, um, uh, because the rest doesn't really apply to what we're going to be doing in class. And now there's going to be, there's one other place that we're going to want to um, adjust some of the parameters. And that's related to the planes, when we make contact to planes. And if we come over here to plane connect, so this is about vias. When we have a via making contact to a plane, so this is electrically connected to the plane, the default condition is a thermal relief. I don't want that. I only want thermal reliefs when I have components that I'm going to solder to. If I don't, I don't want to use a thermal relief. And so I want a direct connection as my default. I can always change selectively a specific via to be thermal relief if I need to, but I want the default condition to be, no con uh, to be a direct connection. That's going to give me the highest interconnect density. And likewise, when I connect to uh, the go through a plane, so I have a clearance hole uh, through that plane, what's the minimum clearance hole? 20 mils is an awfully large clearance on either side. That's going to uh, detract from um, routing channels that I might have. And so I want that, what's the minimum clearance? Most fab houses say six mils, but if we don't need six mils, just to give us a little bit of margin, I'm going to make that 10 mils. So I'm going to adjust that to be 10 mil clearance. And then finally, not only when a via makes contact to a plane, but also when it makes contact to a polygon pore, I want to adjust it so that it is not a thermal relief. I want a direct connection. This is going to be the default condition. I can always make a particular via, a thermal via, if I need to, but generally if I'm just adding a via to some piece of copper and making a connection there, I don't want to use thermal relief. Very important to set these. Everything else is not necessary to change. Those are the primary features that we're going to select. And Now we say apply and look, all those little stars, they said, oh, I hadn't been saved yet. Now they're all saved, and now we're good to go. And now we're ready to start moving some of our parts over and doing some of the routing.